Good evening, or whatever time it is, wherever you're at, and welcome to the Victoria Palms Managers Town Hall Meeting Virtual Edition. This will be the last one we do for the year, although we may try to do recordings of some of the live meetings for those who can't be here. My goal tonight is to try to get us to 30 minutes or less. Let's see how well we can do. First off, the agenda. We're going to look at our new Facebook address. Updates on summer projects, which I think is what you're probably most interested in. Some reminders for activities. Uh, what is this question? And then we'll close. So to begin with, our Facebook. Um, it turns out that we had created a person Facebook instead of a business Facebook. So we had to convert that. When we did, it changed the Facebook address. Um, the old Facebook page is actually pointed to the new one, so either one that you use will get you there, but the new one is a lot easier um, and more direct to get there, and it's easier to remember. So now you can reach our official page at www.facebook.com forward slash Victoria Palms Resort. And in theory, you should be able to click on this link within the YouTube video as well. Activities is doing a really good job of putting everything they can up there so you can not only see upcoming events, you can see pictures and uh, descriptions of uh, past events. It's a great tool and a great way for you to keep connected while you're away. Now let's jump right into the summer project updates. First off is the ballroom floor. Uh, the before picture, hopefully you all remember. Uh, and that was in its good days, by the way. That was prior to the flood when um, tiles had popped all over the place and we had glued things down. And uh, if you remember correctly, it was pretty much a mess. On the after shot, that's your brand new ballroom floor. Now, I'll tell you that it's not 100% complete at this point. Uh, we do have one more finish scheduled on it in April of 2017, but we'll have this to work with uh, throughout the season, and we'll get a chance to get it broken in and enjoy it, and then we'll get it all freshened up uh, in April. It's the latest wow factor for Victoria Palms. Next, you'll see our main gate. The main gate was damaged way back in the windstorm of April 2015. Uh, you may say, how do you damage a gate with the wind? Well, the gate was closed during the windstorm where, depending upon who you listen to, we had 60 to 70 mile an hour winds and debris from across the street, mostly palm fronds and some cardboard pieces and things like that, blew up against that gate and made a wind barrier out of it. Uh, as that wind blew, it actually derailed the gate and then bent the gate such that um, it was not usable. As part of our recovery efforts, we did patch it back together, but it was kind of a nasty mess. It, was, um, it had little welded patches all over it, and uh, it kept losing its shape and jumping off the track. So we had a brand new gate, custom made, uh, built to match the rest of the fencing. Uh, we now have that installed, and it looks incredible. Um, so that's one more behind us and one of the last projects from that windstorm we had almost two years ago. Bocce ball courts. You may recall that last year we redid the bocce ball courts. We put special grass in it. Uh, we nurtured that grass through the summer. Uh, we had our flood and we were able to keep that grass going after the flood. Uh, but as the winter wore on, uh, the grass proved to be not as durable as we had hoped. This year, we've stripped it all back down. We've compacted the sand on the bottom, and we've purchased brand new golf course putting green turf to go on it. This is not the AstroTurf that you put on your back porch that you get at uh, Home Depot. This is high-quality, uh, real golf course turf. This will be laid over a plastic base that provides the uh, secure foundation for it. And this is not flexible plastic. This is a hard plastic base, uh, which gets set in sand, 
the turf goes over top of that and then the turf is covered with sand so that only the top half inch of the turf actually shows. If you've watched NFL football games, you see when somebody gets tackled and uh, the black uh, like dust rolls up behind them as they skid across the turf. Well, that's the exact same thing. The only difference is we're putting sand on top of the turf and the NFL uses a recycled uh, ground up tire material and that's why it looks black on TV. Uh, I think we'll have one of the finest bocce ball setups uh, in the valley and we're really looking forward to getting it done. Our projections are to have the very first court done this week and the uh, second court will get done next week. Craft Center building. Um, there was a lot of work gone into this and it may not be uh, immediately visible but what you should notice right off the bat is the fact that those large ugly cactus are gone. Now you know please don't uh, ring my phone just because I said they were ugly. Um, my contention with those is that they were very dangerous. Um, uh, one that we all know and love, Jody Lowe, just bumped against one, got some of the cactus prawns in his ear, and for a year now, about every 30 days or so, has to go back to the doctor and have surgery on his ear to have these little sticker things removed. They go under the skin and they just sit there and fester until you get like bumps and then you have to go have those lanced and the little sticker taken out. Um, <clears throat> it was a very dangerous situation. Um, they had gotten so big they were diseased. We had pieces falling off of them and uh, it was really concerning that somebody could slip or stumble and and grab onto one of those and it would be worse than grabbing a porcupine it was very bad uh, so we did take those out but we still left the ornamental cactus as you can see um, one of the taller cactus is blooming it's beautiful we also finally got the opportunity to pressure wash the entire outside of the building so it looks really good the landscape committee has been doing a wonderful job of keeping things up and um, you know when was the last time you saw that cactus bloom um, their nurturing and caring and and fertilizing of these plants has done an, an incredible job um, they're happy we're happy and uh, I think it looks really really good the next slide is our bathrooms. Um, we've had some comments that our bathrooms were pretty blah, and they were. Each winter, or each summer, excuse me, we would paint them, but they were white and we were repainting them white. We've now come to what we're calling a color palette for Victoria Palms. And it looks a little pinkish in these pictures, but it actually isn't. It's a very, very nice, um, soothing beige color and the stripe that you see there is a deep rich burgundy color it's a really nice combination it goes well with the tiles with the countertops and I think uh, just an incredibly increased the appearance and the feel of the bathrooms so uh, you know we don't really have the money to make the bathrooms what I want them to be although I have that in future budgets I think this was a really good stopgap to uh, dress them up and make them feel clean and habitable and uh, I think you'll be real pleased with them. Darts in the ballroom. Yes, uh, I mentioned uh, a, a couple of meetings back that we were going to move darts to the ballroom and we've now done that. Um, so far the feedback that I've had is incredible. Uh, you know, we have over 130 people, or had last year, over 130 people playing darts. And there wasn't enough room in that bingo hall uh, for everybody to be able to mingle or sit or even see each other. We had the dartboards spread across multiple rooms. Now we have them all in one room. Um, it's a cooler space, uh, you, you know, more air conditioning. You won't be burning up like you were in the, in the bingo room. There's plenty of room for chairs and tables. You can sit, you can bring your uh, beverages, you can uh, bring snacks. It'll be a much friendlier environment. 
and I also think it will allow the dart group to grow even larger. Now that there's more room, people will come and watch. Um, it is fun to watch, and, and I think uh, people will want to join in. So uh, we've made the move, and uh, I think it'll be a really valuable upgrade, uh, especially for the dart group. Bingo. Bingo's now in the ballroom as well, and I had talked about this in an earlier uh, meeting. Uh, the way we did this, remember that uh, a while back we put curtains up at the rear of the stage. So that bingo board is actually behind the curtains. Under normal conditions, the curtains are closed and you'll never see that. The bingo uh, uh, box where the uh, ball uh, mechanicals are is on wheels and it just rolls back behind the the stage there's storage room back there and it gets parked there when it's bingo time the curtains get slid open that box gets rolled out to the front and it plugs in right to the front of the stage um, both the control cables and the power cable there's also a microphone jack right there behind that box so the bingo caller will have a very easy simple setup um, they'll have the full PA system to use, and now we can seat more people. The, um, you know, we could easily do 300 people um, for bingo and still have good visibility um, to the board. So, again, I think this is one of the things that was being held back because of size constraints. Secondarily, and I don't have a slide for this, but uh, consider the other people that use what used to be the bingo room, like the table tennis people. They will now have more flexibility about when they can play and how they can play. We also gain that space uh, for additional meetings or um, things like uh, potlucks and, and things like that. It won't be so strapped seven nights a week with all of the things that are going on. We can't really expand our space, but I think moving these two amenities up to the ballroom really enhances uh, the space that we have and makes everything more usable. So um, look for it when you get back. Uh, we're pretty excited, and I think a lot of other people are as well. The Mail Center. You know, one of the projects that the Activities Department took over the summer was to recover all of the uh, bulletin boards throughout the park. So not just the ones in the activities lobby, but like you see here in the mail room, in our uh, laundry rooms, any place there was a bulletin board for public access, they've now been covered with some nice fabric, they've been reorganized, um, they're neater, they're understandable. Yes, there's still bulletin boards where you can put things that are for sale, um, you haven't lost that, but now that they're actually managing this, when you look at the, the bulletin boards, you shouldn't find old things that are out of date. It shouldn't be things tacked up over top of other things. It'll be a much neater, cleaner, um, more easy to use uh, setup for those boards. So, uh, you know, it's a little thing, it's not a huge thing, but I think it means a lot. And you'll also see off there to the right, it's our uh, smiling faces from the Mail Center. Uh, the girls there work hard and they don't get a lot of publicity because uh, usually all you see is their smiling faces through, those, uh, through that window. So I thought it was only fair to um, throw their picture up here as well. The lobby, one of the things that I have as a goal, and fortunately uh, Lori supports me very much in, is making the lobby more homey feeling. And so one of the things that we've tried to do is we've kind of reorganized the furniture, but with every few dollars that we have left at the end of the month from our budget, um, we try to invest that into um, decorations and things that make it feel more homey. Um, you know, it's a fairly big room. The furniture is kind of cold and hard. Um, the seating is leather. Um, without some homey touches, it can be kind of cold. And I think uh, we're making big strides 
toward uh, getting it better. And I think you'll uh, see that when you look through the folder or through the photos here. Um, you know, it's a, again, kind of a small thing, but I think it's uh, very noticeable when you go through the activities lobby. Still to come, projects that we're still working on, pothole repairs. Um, you know, it's very difficult to do pothole repairs with 150 degree um, with 150 degree asphalt working in 114 degree weather it can be incredibly difficult um, and um, kind of hazardous to your health so we've been waiting for it to cool off a little bit it's happened you know our temperatures are now down in the high 80s uh, upper 90s and uh, we're going to get that done so that's coming over the next couple of weeks the front wall extension and this is the extent the wall at the front of the resort that separates the the resort from the interstate um, that wall currently is only five feet tall and that does two things makes it kind of easy to come over that wall and secondarily it allows all the noise from the the highway to come in we're going to be extending that wall end to end uh, about three feet and we think that will help at least with both of those things. I do want to brag just a little bit. If you uh, think back to last year, you know, we did have some bicycle thefts and some things like that. Uh, we did a couple of things. The first thing we did is we put up a wall at the cul-de-sac entrance from the hotel. Used to be anybody could come through that hotel entrance and go right into the resort, even driving into that cul-de-sac and get into the rest of the resort. And on multiple occasions, we saw contractors going through there and various others. So we plugged that hole. We went down that whole wall at the front of the resort and we chopped back the trees and the bushes and the vines and things that were climbing over the wall. Um, those made for wonderful steps for somebody to get up and over the wall. We took out that tree that was out in front of our property um, where they had found the bicycles hidden that time. Back behind the RV office, we put barbed wire on the top of the fence and we put street lights down Victoria Road to light that area. So what did that do? We had zero break-ins, thefts, anything um, this summer. We have had absolutely no reports of anything. Now, was all of that simply because of what we did? Well, of course not. Some of it's luck, um, but it's an, a, a proven fact that if you make it more difficult, they're going to look for the easiest way. And when we took away their easy ways into the resort, uh, we made it much more likely that they'll go someplace else. There's no reason for them to work that hard to get in. With that in mind, uh, we'll continue to do things like that. Um, you know, we have fixed the gate over at the hotel. That gate gets closed at night now, and um, for a year that was broken. Um, that's fixed now. I've instructed our security guards at our front gate at about 9 o'clock to start closing the gate. There's no reason to have it open. Um, they can push a button and open it once they see your sticker, or you can open it with your clicker, um, but there's no reason to just have it wide open. All of these things are just done to make sure that we keep honest people honest, and we don't allow teenagers to uh, um, come in and play around, and that's really what most of this was. So I think we're making good progress. That front wall extension will help even more. We're going to put more handicapped parking spaces in, and, and that doesn't mean uh, uh, necessarily adding spaces. It means that we need to have handicapped spaces at all of our buildings. Well, you know, we don't have one at the mail center. We don't have one at the uh, large laundry room, <clears throat> and both of those should have them. So we're only required to have one, but if you're a handicapped resident, um, I'm sure you would appreciate the fact that there's a space reserved for you. And, you know, we think that's pretty important and we're going to make sure that happens. We're also in the process, um, this is going to happen next week, 
of doing more cable TV upgrades. Let me be 100% honest. We spent a lot of money upgrading the, the cable plant. And most of that was cabling, it was hardware out throughout the park. These were all things that needed to be done. But the final result of all of that was, while we might have been doing things in a more professional way, in other words, things were being amplified as they should and, and things were being distributed as they should, um, we didn't really see the results that we wanted on our TVs in our houses. So this last upgrade is going to replace the units that actually bring the signal in, so these are direct TV receivers, and convert them so that they can go on to the cable plant. Um, those are called modulators. All of that equipment is being replaced and they did Alamo Palms, our sister park, which has the exact same setup that we do. Um, they did that this week and the initial reports are that it was a significantly better picture, um, more consistent throughout the channels, the sound is better. Um, so we're hoping that we get the same result here at Victoria Palms. Um, like I say, that happens next week. We're going to recoat the pool sidewalk. Again, this is one of those projects that is very difficult to do when it's really hot. Uh, the, the coating dries too quickly and it, it becomes kind of nasty the way um, you can see every stroke of the roller when you're putting it down. So we'll be working on that to get another coat on that. We're also going to do the driveway that goes into the front of the lobby. Uh, right now it's uh, kind of ugly, red, peeling. Uh, we're going to get that uh, stripped down and we'll coat that just like we did the sidewalk around the, uh, the pool area. Uh, I think that will uh, be much more fitting with the front of that building. A quick business update. <clears throat> Important that you understand that um, Yes, we're doing everything we can to make things good for you as residents, um, but we're also getting new reservations. Uh, some of that is because we're doing better advertising. Uh, we've done some better shows. Uh, I had a chance to go to Hamilton, Ontario and do a show up there. Uh, we gained, I believe, eight reservations just from that show that are three months or longer. Um, you know, these type of things where we can put people together personally and show them uh, what we have to offer makes a big difference. And by the way, we did not do the $199 special to bring those people in. So it's positive in many, many ways. A lot of these people are first time guests. Some of them are people that haven't been down in a while. And, uh, you know, uh, some of them have come from other uh, resorts. They may have been at Victoria Palms before, um, moved on at some point. Uh, some of them have told me that they moved on when the Heinz Group did the big rent increase, um, but they're coming back. And, and a lot of this is because there's a lot of positivity that's going on around the resort. People are happy, um, the changes are noticeable, and uh, the resort looks beautiful. I also want to let you know that Victoria Palms is at the top. There are 10 Encore properties in the Rio Grande Valley, and our property is number one in the valley. We have the highest year-over-year -year growth. Um, things are really looking positive. Now, you probably know that I'm a vice president at the uh, Texas Recreational Vehicle Association for the Rio Grande Valley and I get a chance on a monthly basis to talk to other property managers and owners and this is not the general trend. Now there are some properties, um, most notably the properties that um, service French Canadians seem to be growing, um, but most of the other properties are flat at best. Some of them are even going down. We're on a growth uh, trend here. To give you an idea, um, for the fourth quarter, we're almost $9,000 above what we were at this very time last year, and new reservations are coming in every day. Three, four, five reservations, and most of them are multi-month. Um, that's very positive. Already, as of today, 
our January, February, March, which is our main season, is almost $80,000 above what it was last year. So that's significant. We're very, very proud with the fact that um, the work that we're doing is being recognized. You residents are out telling your friends. Uh, you know, we're getting good feedback on Facebook. We're getting uh, uh, TripAdvisor reviews. Everything is going positive, and we hope that you appreciate the fact that we're doing this for you. And, and this growth is not in any way to inhibit anything that's going on. The more money that comes in, the more updates and upgrades and things that we can do to help the resort. So, you know, I hope you understand that this is all very, very positive. I also want to mention that um, we were privileged to have the Texas ELS kickoff at Victoria Palms um, last week. Uh, now what this is, is every fall for the winter properties, so for the Arizona properties, the Florida properties, and the Texas properties, they do a kickoff. It's um, some education, it's some rah-rah, but the idea is to get everybody revved up and ready for the return of our residents so that we have our, our service hats on, we're thinking customer service, we're thinking how we can help you and how we can make things better. We're doing the things that we need to do around the resort and we're ready for the, um, you know, the, the big winter season. Uh, the people that were there, we had all 19 managers from uh, the state of Texas. There's 10 down in the valley and there's nine more in other places within Texas. And we had the entire executive team from Chicago here. And that's all the way up to senior vice president level, uh, the CFO. You know, all of the people that have a say in what we can and can't do were in the resort. Uh, one of the coolest things that happened while they were here is I get an opportunity as the host to tour them. So we had a caravan tour that I took all around the resort. And, you know, I just have to tell you that people were blown away. Um, there was nothing but positive feedback from the other managers. A lot of questions asked about how we were doing things and how we got certain things done. I took them through our arrivals process and our fresh baked cookies in the front office and, and this is different. This is not what the rest of the parks are doing, uh, either our parks or the competitors' parks. And so there was a lot of interest, especially from the executives who are taking all of this to heart and uh, you know asking for additional uh, input on these things. It does have an impact. The overall um, message on the uh, meeting was the race to the finish. And so this picture is a picture of our stage in the ballroom, and we've uh, configured it like a uh, pit at a NASCAR race. Well, sort of. You know, they're probably a little neater than this, but, you know, we have tires and tools and toolboxes and, you know, all of these things. And it was really cool that all of our executives were there and they did a little entry skid and um, we had great learning experience presentations and uh, uh, it was a really good time and everybody um, said it was good. In fact, um, multiple people have said it was the best kickoff meeting ever held. Um, that just sets the bar higher for whoever hosts it next year, but uh, we were real proud. We put a lot of work into it, and I think it really paid off. Uh, from the activities department, dances. Uh, you know, <clears throat> these are the things that I keep telling you about. Um, uh, we're working so hard to make not just a full schedule, but a good schedule where there's not a bunch of conflicts and, and you know, we're not fighting back and forth with the Cactus Club. I think you're going to see incredible um, alignment of how these things go. Every Friday at four o'clock there'll be a happy hour with live music in the ballroom and then the fish fry takes place and I won't break the bubble here but uh, the restaurant has expanded the fish fry. It's going to be better than it's ever been. And then 
starting at 7 p.m., we have a dance with live music. Um, so Fridays are going to be wonderful. And then there'll still be dances, entertainments, all kinds of things on Saturdays at the Cactus Club. So you're not going to have to make a decision, do I want to hear the band in the uh, ballroom or do I want to go to the Cactus Club? You'll be able to do both. Or you can do neither. We're also trying to keep things as inexpensive as we can because I know it's tough enough to travel, to pay for your insurance, to pay your rent, and then to pay for entertainment and things on top of that. We're keeping our ticket prices cheap. We're continuing to give away uh, ice and cups and popcorn. So, you know, anything that we can do to try to keep it uh, minimalized, uh, we're there. And I think it's going to be an incredible season. Of course, I've talked about the fact that we're going to do game shows and holiday parties and scavenger hunts and cook-offs. One of the things I haven't talked a lot about is Lori has contracted with a new tour company. And I know those of you that have been around for a while had this at one time. Well, we just couldn't find a company that fit, that really wanted to work with us, that kind of understood what we were trying to do. Well, we've got that company now. They're going to be on site one day a week. They'll be uh, advertising and talking about the tours that they've got set up. They'll be taking input to find out what it is that you want because that's really what it's all about. We've already gotten a uh, suggestion and it's already being packaged up. Um, apparently, there's a, um, a hockey game between the... Um, the Maple Leafs and the uh, Dallas Stars and so we're putting together a package um, with a bus tour and an overnight accommodations and all of that to go up there we can do sporting events like Spurs games we can do fishing trips um, at the island there's uh, winery tours there you name it um, they've put together a whole array they have big tour buses as well as small but very nice uh, Mercedes, I um, uh, forget what they're called, but they're like 15 passenger uh, deals that are stand-up height and have TVs in them and uh, just really nice. Look for this and, and uh, I think it's going to be incredible. And if you have ideas, please send them to us. So Lori would love to hear it because this tour company has been very eager to please. And there'll be more and more and more. We really and truly believe that this is going to be one of the most fun years ever. And that's not just fun years, the, the, the most fun year in the past few ever. This is going to be a great year. Reminders, concert tickets are still available, Redhead Express tickets. Let me tell you just how all of this is working. Um, we're just about, at the end of this month, we're going to start advertising externally. Our concert tickets, I think our average shows are between 450 and 500 seats already sold. Um, so if you don't have tickets, you need to step up and, and get those while they're still available. Not all parks are getting these concerts this year. Um, there's only two parks that get all of the concerts, and there's three more that get some of the concerts. That leaves uh, all the rest of them out there that have to come to us. We want to make sure that you get tickets before anybody else. If you haven't gotten them, please call Activities and uh, they can set your tickets aside. Redhead Express, let me tell you how big this is. And we haven't even advertised it yet. We're going to be doing multi full page ads and I absolutely guarantee you it'll be sold out as soon as those ads go out. This week, Lori sold 10 tickets um, to a group who's flying in from Oklahoma City just to see this concert. They bought the tickets, they rented rooms at the hotel, they're going to fly in, see the concert, and then fly back out the next day because the Redhead Express is booming. They're Nashville now, and uh, there's very little opportunity to see them. Uh, we all kind of think that they're going to be the next uh, big thing in country music, and uh, this is your chance to see them right here before they're too big to be able to afford. Uh, New Year's Eve tickets are still available. Uh, I think we have a maximum of about 
500 and I think there's almost 300 already sold. Um, don't quote me on that, I, I, but I think that's where we're at. Um, they've been very, very popular. People are buying them by the table. And uh, again, we are doing external advertising starting either um, the, the last week of October or the first week of November. So uh, if you don't have your tickets, give us a call. Uh, let's get those done. I, I want our residents to have first shot. Also, and I've mentioned this before, we need your help. We need setups. Uh, we don't have a chair crew like we had in the past, but we need volunteers to help. Um, there's perks, you get free admission, we're not going to ask you to mop the floors, and you're part of the activity department, you know, uh, and truthfully, that's one of the happiest places in the uh, whole resort right now. Those guys are having a blast, and they're really getting into doing these events. So, give them a call, and, uh, you know, if you'd like to volunteer, they would love to have you, and the more volunteers we get, the less anybody has to do. So it's kind of a win-win. And then there's the what is this. Um, I warned you, I've told you over and over, if we could get the street sweeper fixed, I was going to start driving it. And, and I'm going to tell you that I've made some revelations in driving this. First off, it's absolutely true what many of you have told me, and that is if it's driven carefully and slowly, and in some cases, uh, the same street gets done twice, it makes a difference. The street sweeper works incredibly well. It does a good job of picking things up and keeping the gutters clean. And, uh, uh, you know, it needed somebody that cared. And uh, so I'm driving it, you know. Um, it uh, takes me out of the office a little bit, but it's been, uh, you know, almost enjoyable, to be honest. Of course, it's not without its uh, perils um, so far with me driving it. Uh, I guess I'm working it pretty hard, but I've broken it three times. It's been down for the past four weeks, I guess, while we ordered a part for it. The part's in. It just got put back together today. Uh, so right this minute, if you call your friends and they say, you know, the streets don't look that good. Well, I agree, but uh, I'll be back on it and we'll get it going. So in closing... Your feedback on this new medium is appreciated. You know, uh, I'm trying to find ways to communicate to make sure that you're in touch with what we're doing here. We don't go on vacation when you go home. Uh, in fact, that's when we ramp things up and try to get as much done as we can. Um, if you have questions, if you have comments, uh, I'm trying real hard to keep this shorter, but man, I just, there's so many things going on and I talk too much. So, um, you know, here's my email address. Send me your comments and I'll do my best. And if you have questions, uh, I'll get right to them and get answers to you as quick as I can. With that, I want to say stay well, travel safe, and hurry back because we miss you.